So Philip Schmidt, come on up. Where is, where is Philip? Philip? Philip hails from Philadelphia. Um, he works for the Institute's Risk Block Alliance, which is a not-for-profit that emerged out of the Wharton School 100 years ago or more. And Philip is an economist, which I think, hands up if you invested recently in any crypto coin whatsoever, ever. Uh, you guys don't need an economist. You're already smart. Philip. Go ahead. It's, it's Patrick, but I go by Philip, too, if you'd like. <laughs> uh, so my name is Patrick Schmid. I'm an economist, and I work in the insurance industry. Um, I've taught economics and finance at most of the Philadelphia area universities and colleges, including Wharton, Drexel, um, St. Joseph's University, Temple. Um, I learned about Bitcoin in 2012. Um, because my interest in economics, even though I entered into the insurance industry, really never waned. It just became more of a hobby. Um, I was looking into assets that may appreciate in value due to the current monetary policy, and I stumbled upon Bitcoin. Um, and of course, like many of you, I, I, once I did, I dug and I dug and I dug, and I learned more and more and more. And at this point, I became interested in altcoins and learning a little bit about them. You know, all the above I was doing as a hobby, but in 2015, for me, it, it really changed. Um, I learned quite a few things about this subject matter that started to bring what I was learning about over here, kind of more in the economic space, into insurance. And that was really smart contracts. So in 2015, I learned about Ethereum. I also learned about smart contracts. And at this point, I had taken a new job within the institutes. The institutes is a 501c3 not for, not for, not-for-profit serving the risk management insurance industry and was formed out of Wharton over 100 years ago. We educate over 100,000 unique students annually. They are all property casualty insurance professionals. So at the time, we were looking at trends in the insurance industry and we became pr pretty apparent that the insurance industry is changing. It's becoming more automated. And one of the things we wanted to do as an educational organization was get in front of that increased automation. So the question was how? Well, as I was learning about smart contracts, it became pretty apparent that these were going to disrupt the insurance industry. If you really think about a smart contract, you could pretty much think of it as an if-then statement. And if you think about what insurance is, it's pretty much an if-then statement. If this occurs, then that, pay out. So one of the unique things about the institutes is our board. Our board is comprised of 40 CEOs that represent about 60% of domestic insurance premium volume in the United States. And as I mentioned earlier, we, have, we educate over 100,000 students annually. So we have a network already within the Institute's base. So we set forth in talking to our board about the potential of forming a blockchain consortium. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that blockchain consortium, Risk Block. Before I do, I typically start off, um, I think this is more of a technical crowd, but I typically st start off talking a little bit about blockchain and you know, the, the evolution over time. You know, really, you can consider blockchain technology to be fusing the network and the, the database or ledger together through encryption to provide advancements in e-commerce and computing. And really, the e-commerce advancements clearly started with Bitcoin. And then we had about 1,500 other, 1500 other cryptocurrencies that have been created since. You can look, look at CoinMarketCap for the most recent number, one of which is Ethereum. And there's also other smart contract um, platforms as well. But one of the unique things about smart contracts is they're kind of related to computing. So again, our, our kind of informal definition is network fused with database or ledger through encryption to provide advancements in e-commerce and computing. And you see that play out there. But one of the things that's also interesting is there are private permissioned and consortia blockchains, none of which have really been mentioned yet today. And a lot of the business usage is actually occurring up there on Hyperledger Fabric, on JP Morgan's Quorum on digital asset, um, the, the Australian Stock Exchange is moving to digital asset, and on Corda, there's R3 is a, a consortium of about 80 banks that formed Corda. So, so we talked a little bit about um, how, what type of platforms could be potentially leveraged by the insurance industry. Why would the insurance industry get involved in blockchain at all? Well, honestly, there's a ton of pain points in the insurance industry. Really bad customer service is one of them. I don't know if you've been in a, an incident recently where you've been in an auto crash or something like that, but the truth is the customer experience could be dramatically improved, and blockchain could help. It's not Right now, it's not seamless. 
It's not personalized. You have to maintain physical receipts and a variety of other information. There's a lot of reconciliation issues. There's also considered to be high premiums in the insurance industry. And the only way to really lower those premiums, though, is to cut costs because frequency and severity are often high, so insurers have no other choice but to charge those premiums. There's weak product innovation. I mean, there's a lot of new, new technologies, drones, even cryptocurrency could be insured, but you could go through the list of all the new technologies and what needs to be insured, and the insurance industry is generally pretty conservative. And then there's, then there's slow entry into developing countries and emerging markets. And one of the reasons that the insurance industry has been slow to enter into those markets is because it's too costly. So maybe blockchain can really help here. So let's look at the insurer perspective. There's high administrative costs. The cost of record keeping within the industry is extremely high. There's reconciliations throughout, particularly B2B recon reconciliation issues. So insurers need to verify identities, contract validity, registration of claims, loss payouts. There's a lot of opportunity there for blockchain. There's also costly intermediaries scattered throughout the entire industry that all could be displaced, not all of which would be dis displaced, but some of whom could be displaced by blockchain technology. There's fragmented data sources. It's very difficult to get the data you need in the, in the insurance industry. There's manual processes. The World Economic Forum has a great example of how the entire claims process could be automated using blockchain technology. It's fraud prone, it, there's stringent regulation. So what are some of the benefits that blockchain offers? Well, there's increased automation that's possible through the use of smart contracts, improved record keeping, especially from B2B sharing from company to company, um, potential for lower costs through increased trust and auditability, streamlined access to data, and potentially an improved customer experience. So what are some of the areas that the insurance industry is looking into? These are all the buckets of the insurance value chain. Products pricing and distribution, underwriting risk management, policyholder acquisition and servicing, claims management, finance payments and accounting, and regulation and compliance. And what we did in our white paper, if you want to check it out, I'm not going to get, have enough time to go through every use case that you could go through here, because there's so many of them, it would be very difficult to, to count. Um, but you can check, out, check us out, just Google Risk Block Alliance and you can look, look up our white paper where we provided more detail on each of these. But there are a lot of potential opportunities for, here for the industry. Just for example, in products pricing and distribution, you've probably heard of parametric insurance. It's one of the first blockchain examples. You've heard about crop insurance and what you could do via an oracle, if you had a weather-based oracle. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but in addition to that, you could have mobile insurance for developing countries. You could have insurance included in transactional purchases. That would all be in the first bucket. In underwriting and risk management, I was talking to someone earlier about provenance. Blockchain could help with tracking of origins of high-valued items. There's potential for data sharing and risk registries to pop up here and be useful. Peer-to-peer -peer insurance is even, even actually more feasible under blockchain technology. From a policyholder acquisition and servicing standpoint, placement, um, blockchain could really help um, provide the necessary underwriters and brokers with the necessary information. All parties needing access to this information could be provided that access via keys. Um, claims management, again, a fraud register could be located there, automation of the claims process. In the finance, payments, and accounting, businesses in the insurance industry, like through subrogation, often are trading information. Envelopes are literally being traded from all state to USAA to State Farm. The truth is you could use a shared ledger to net those payments and not have to send all those envelopes. Think about the increased efficiency associated with this. And then regulation and compliance. You could have real-time regulatory monitoring in a consortia chain. You could have an educational licensing catalog for the industry. Proof of insurance verification is something we've been working on. That's also possible. So I'm going to get into some of the, the topics that we've been working on from a consortia standpoint. So one of the things to point out is we um, started last year um, we had about 40 or so companies involved in our initiative. A lot of the biggest carriers in the United States, biggest brokers in the United States, and biggest uh, reinsurers in the United States. And right now we have about 30 full members that are paying members, um, including Farmers, Nationwide, Liberty Mutual, Marsh from a broker perspective, Munich Re from a reinsurance perspective. And one of the, these are some of the topics that we're working on. Um, proof of insurance, for example. This working group 
built a mobile website and web-based app that allows for proof of insurance verification on the blockchain. The app allows for multiple roles showing the blockchain's ability to provide potentially a binary yes-no for ins proof of insurance coverage or a more detailed view. The truth about this is longer term, this has huge potential for the industry, not just to increase the customer experience on the spot, but the truth is you could start to catch uninsured motorists. Imagine if you're dr driving through a toll and the toll can it, figure out whether you're insured or uninsured and a smart contract kicks off to a police officer to potentially pull you over if you're uninsured. Because keep in mind, the people who are insured are paying for those uninsured motorists and they don't want to continue to do that. So that's one example. Um, data sharing is another example. Generally, when you're involved in an accident, you have to fill out a first notice of loss. That is then transferred from party to party, you know, from a lead to a follower, potentially. And we've pretty much automated that with our first notice of loss working group. Um, subrogation, I already explained, is generally a trading of money from party to party, um, from all states to Liberty Mutual in a certain situation. And those envelopes are exchanged. You could use a shared ledger there, and that's what we're building there. And then finally, with um, parametric insurance, uh, this working group originally started inspecting hurricane win payouts related to wind speeds, but eventually pivoted to uh, business disruption with payouts related to rainfall. Uh, the example used here was for fruit food truck operators. Uh, portions of this business are event oriented. You know, you're going out to a ball game or something like that. You have to buy inventory. When you go to that ball game, if it's, if it's a rain out, you lose. But what happens if you were insured? And you could do so parametrically based upon the rainfall in that particular zip code. So that's the type of um, work, use cases that we're working on now. We have a backlog of about 50. And um, I'm just going to take you to our final slide here just to kind of give you an overview of our value proposition. So our, our, what are we, what are, how are we different? Um, one of the main things I'll get into is that we're blockchain agnostic. We don't care what the industry builds on. We're not for profit. We have no stake in the game. That's truly unique. Um, so I'll get to that in a second. But our consortium is different in the fact that we're backed by a not for profit that's been around for over 100 years, serving the industry. Um, we also have another not for profit that, so we're kind of in the PNC insurance space, but we also have another not for profit called LIMRA that is looking into expanding this into the life annuities and retirement space. Uh, we have good relations that have expanded over the past 100 years with all the other industry players in the industry. So um, we're t attempting to basically build an ecosystem for the insurance industry. That's one of the reasons why I'm here today is to speak to a crowd like this about potential opportunities for startups and others to come in and get involved in what we're doing. Um, we have preferred solution providers that are helping us build. The, uh, we have a, a count of five right now. Accenture, Deloitte, Capgemini, IBM, and uh, Ernst & Young. They are all our preferred solution providers. And uh, we can leverage the Institute's education to produce blockchain educational products. Our goal is not to build proof of concepts. We want to build production-ready applications for the industry. So although we find it useful to build a proof of concept, we're trying to move past that. And finally, and most importantly, we're blockchain agnostic. We don't care what platform the industry wants to build upon. Our hope is that eventually this will become a network of networks and there will be interoperability amongst blockchains. Um, so we feel blockchain has huge potential for insurance. I couldn't underscore that enough. The fact that data can now be shared B2B in a secure manner could have so many efficiencies on the insurance industry. It's kind of impractical to even think about what they could be years from now. So it's really exciting to be in, in, in this area right now. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, I'd, I'd love to talk to you. So thank you.